to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it, we have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to a well-designed business. It's Power Talk Friday, and I am happy to tell you that today is a sponsored show by Terry Taylor, the founder of the Interior Design Business Academy. I'm sure you remember Terry from episode number 548, and if this is the first time you are hearing either of Terry Taylor or her previous episode, literally go right to that episode after this one, because during that episode, Terry wowed us with her how to come up with a budget on the fly during a consultation. This was such a genius technique that really is so easy to execute once you've done a little bit of homework for yourself, which she explains to you all in the episode on how to do that. Um, but it really helps get the elephant of budget out of the middle of the room and on the table as a good conversation. I got tons of of feedback, emails, DMs, and posts about how many designers were just wowed by that episode. So I'm so grateful. And today, Terry is back with us. Hi, Terry. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. I'm so happy to be back again. I'm glad. Yes, I'm glad you're here today, today too, because today we are going to be talking about the nuts and bolts side of how interior designers get paid for the value that they bring their uh, consumers, their clients, right? You have said to me that we want to talk about the advantages of fees versus hourly, design fees in relations to project budgets, you know, all these things that surround the money, right? The pricing, the furniture, and the product properly so you don't get pushback, how to have profitable remodeling jobs, how to present and price a big design fee on a huge build. I mean, these are all some of the things that you do in the coaching that you do with the interior designers that have gone through your academy for years, and you know exactly the pain points that designers are experiencing when they're talking about money and budget with clients. Right, Terry? Absolutely. Absolutely. We do because, you know, I, I was in the, (laughs) I'm a, I'm a (laughs) came from the business. I did 30 years in the, in the field there um, knowing and trying to figure this stuff out. So, uh, you know, being able to develop ways that are consistently successful like a recipe, do this, then do this, then do this, then do this, and it works. It's like this amazing thing we figured out. It's really, really fun <laughs> and really, really predictably successful. So it really is. It's very, very cool. Uh, and, and you know, we, we look at things like remodeling jobs, which, you know, 10 years ago, you had a few, but it wasn't a big deal. Now, everybody's redoing houses. So, you know, it became, you know, on my plate is how is it that you make it profitable? Because all you're going to do is draw it. That's not going to do much. (laughs) And all you're going to do is write specifications. That doesn't do much. And then what I saw happening is designers going out and checking on it all the time. And they'd show up and actually doing doing project construction support, um, but unpaid. Right. Unpaid, and then the contractor calls, and you need something right away, and they drop everything. Have to run out and be a hero. We got to watch this hero stuff, right? right? <laughs> you know, it, there's something we get out of being a hero about running out the door and and fixing something, which is nice, but it totally disrupts our time, and that's why we end up working at ten or eleven at night doing paperwork, is because we rescued somebody along the way. But you know, even if you're still doing that, you're supposed to get paid for it. Okay, and it's not just a couple thousand dollars to to draw it and do the specifications, but it's all that time to see that project all the way through um, that you're supposed to get paid for. And what we figured out and what's actually working 
um, is that you can charge 10 to 12 percent of whatever that project budget is. And I'm not talking about your budget, just your designer budget, but the whole construction budget, the whole thing, okay, which takes your 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 fees, your money that ends up to you out of the couple thousand dollar range and into the thirty, forty, fifty, eighty thousand dollar range. It makes an enormous difference in your business. And frankly, it's really easy to sell. How about that? Well, that part I like. So let me just clarify though. So you're talking about that you have found through your own 30 years experience by being in the an interior designer doing professional projects as well as all of the designers that you're coached over the past several years is that that sweet spot of 10 to 12 percent of the overall construction budget is a number that most designers can hit so i we we know there's probably luxury and very 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 seasoned designers that might be charging more but generally what you're saying is you're your your designer out there who's doing a good job that maybe isn't it an AD one hundred designer, the ten to twelve percent is not out of reach. It's true. It's okay. True. It's and and let me true. clarify too, just so because you know how me because I wasn't a designer for I'm not a designer and haven't been one for thirty years. So is that the design fee is set at ten to twelve percent of the budget, Terry? I just want to make sure. Or is that like there's a design fee and then that's the management and the procurement fee? Like how what is the distinction well, it's, there? It's all of those all of those put together. Put together, okay. okay. Yeah, but not not the well not the procurement fee. Okay. Okay, because that first of all, in order in order to have a successful design business, I'm going to back up a little bit. You've got to put a huge division between design fees and procurement and purchasing. Mm -hmm. It's like the Grand Canyons in the middle of it, because design is design and you could make a living just designing. Right. Period. Right. And not do any product at all. And so what when you separate those two. Um, you're going to be way more profitable because you essentially offer purchasing as a customer service you do for your clients. And if you'd like me to take care for you, this is what it costs. Okay. So there's a big, you know, there's a big, there's a big difference there. If you hook it all together, it gets mucky. It gets mucky. Right. It gets mucky. It's right. mucky for you and it's mucky for them. Right. So design is just design purely. So that, that, $10,000, dollars $80,000 fee is for um, perhaps millwork drawings and some electrical drawings that you have to do in the beginning phases, all those specifications you have to write and get into the contractor, all of the construction support that you're going to do along the way with a boundary on it, okay? It isn't just unlimited, right? But you figure out a chunk for it. And what we call the interior design part, which is actually the furnishings, and soft goods and windows and all of that piece. But just Those the design all... of that, as you said, just... not the procurement oh. of it. Okay. Exactly. Precisely. Yeah. So all of that gets done in its own. It's like its own swim lane. And then purchasing is another swim lane. So the profit you make on purchasing is on top of those fees that you started with. And so if so, I'm understanding you correctly, there's three phases of billing. One is the design phase. The second is this middle phase, but doesn't inc include any of the ordering or the buying of it. It just includes all the specifications of it, and it includes some vi site visits to the project. And then the third way in the billing is the actual product that you buy and you make your market and your margin on that, right? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. That's what yeah. I thought it was. Okay. Yeah. I yeah, know that so the rest of the designers listening know this. They're like, Luann, really? But I have to be, I have to make sure I get it. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's really good. Thank you for clarifying because it isn't clear. I mean, it, it really isn't clear. Okay. Um, it, 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 everybody needs to know that, that that needs to get totally separated. One of the problems designers get um, caught in is that finding something somebody likes and then selling it and then find something somebody likes and selling it. If you do that, it will take 10 times longer to get the job done. Mm. <laughs> and and you get then you get in the one-off things where you're delivering pieces instead of doing a big reveal because you bought them a piece at a time and they expect them to show up that way. And then they pick on those pieces once they get in the room because, you know, it because they can, right? right. <laughs> you know, they don't have this big um, shift that everything's beautiful. In fact, rooms get, if you do it that way, their rooms will get worse before they get better. Yes. Which will guarantee you a whole lot of hand holding in the middle, you know, and I've did it for years and it's like, this is awful. 
I mean, it is the part where the whole thing's going to fall apart because it looks so bad because it's half this and half that. Right. Yes, so, we've had designers talk about that on the show as well. You just open it up for a can of worms. Um, Ellie Morose was on the show many, uh, many, many months ago, and she said the very first project she ever did, she delivered a, um, some sort of chest or something for a foyer. And the client threw a fit because it's too big and it's too this. And she's like, but that's because you have your your dinky little accessories and your dinky little picture over. Like, wait till I put all the stuff around, right? Yeah. And make it yeah. right, right? And she said, yeah, that's exactly. it. From that moment, she went to reveal installs, period. No negotiation <laughs> on it. <Yeah>. Smart woman. <laughs> right. Just- yeah, you don't even leave. No, it's not even an option. And the other thing that happens is when you do all the design at once and present it all at once, it takes you a third of the time. Mm. Okay, so you you start making your time make sense with what the the project is. You know, part of being fee based is 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 being able to have this number that's logical against the budget of what you should be able to do, how many hours you have to do it, and then you create a budget for yourself for your hours. So it's not just this free-for-all where you just start working on something and go do this for a while and that for a while and that for a while, because without any framework, while it feels like freedom, it isn't, because you'll end up working until 10 o'clock every night, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. trying to get the stuff done that had to get done. So, uh, you, you know, this whole having a structure, um, about the way you produce a job in a system that streamlines everything starts making sense. And that's where you start making some money and, and have a life. Well, know? and I can see that, that it's in my, when you said, you know, when you do the design all at once, it's more efficient. You do it at, at, at a better, at less hours. You, and the, probably you create a better design because you're picking everything yeah. all at the same time. One goes with another, but I can yeah. also see that, you know, whether it's two weeks, two months or whatever down the road, if one piece isn't available, the client is also past that point of design too. It's like we have the whole design done. We're into the next phase. And then you go to find out, oh, this one chest is not available. It's, I would think that for me being a client, if you said to me, hey, remember we did the design for this room. This was the chest. It's back ordered five months, but this one's in stock. We'll have it for reveal day. Um, I'm going to substitute this. Isn't it beautiful? I'm much more likely to go, yeah. That looks great, too, because I'm past it also. I'm like, you made a beautiful room. I'm into now we're watching the tile get installed on the floor, (laughs) right? Exactly. Exactly. And the commitment is to the whole thing, not to a individual piece at a time. Exactly. And whereas if it's in the beginning, I'm like, well, I mean, are there 50 other chests that you can show me? Are you sure that's the one? (laughs) I'm not sure if I like the handles on that. Exactly. (laughs) "Ah!" (laughs) Right. It makes perfect sense it makes perfect sense so but here's the thing about this Tara you've done this a million times and of course you have a system for doing it which is what you teach designers when they come to your academy but there are there's intangibles in this I know from our first conversation that you have a tremendous skill set as a salesperson and you know, to me, the heart of sales and being a great salesperson is rooted in our mindset and the way we approach things just like that. That's a mindset. You you get your client from design is done to now we're doing building. And when I have a question back in design, I, even as a client, I don't want to spend a lot of time there. So, but how do you teach designers this, that, you know, rather than wait 30 years experience and do it 16 times the wrong way, what, what do you, what's the <laughs> secret sauce in all of this? Well, the secret sauce to getting paid what you're worth and being able to get into those big fees and 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 making all that stuff happen is mindset, and it's a it's actually wealth consciousness. Mm. And you know, wealth consciousness isn't just about money; it's about it's about abundance and abundance of of love, of health, of business, of creativity, of of money, things, whatever it by it's it's being able to live life to the fullest and really expand into it. And we know that our clients who are are there. That's that's the place that they operate from. So you, you know it, it it's we have to bring ourselves up to that level because that's not always where we're at. So when we're working with with wealth consciousness, and that's really the other half, the other the you know the other key to how this works, and and I I discovered it probably about 
eight years ago. I've been doing this almost 10 years. So about eight years ago, I figured out that no amount of scripts and systems and recipes and, you know, how to's did any good at all unless I shifted somebody's mindset about what they thought they could create and and how big they see themselves and how, what's possible, what's actually possible and what they believe they're worth in terms of money and love and health and all those things and, and being able to invite it in. You know, we, we can get a little woo-woo with this and it, it does get a little woo-woo, but it also is <laughs> really, it's really, really works, is that the universe is, is generous and the universe is designed to expand. It doesn't contract, it expands. If you think of a tree, it, it's, its life is to expand to its fullest expression of itself before it dies. Mm. And we, as people, ha- have the same, same covenant to run on, that we are meant to expand. We are meant to go to the full extent of what we're capable of. And so, you know, when, we t- when, we talk, when I talk about being able to charge a $60,000 fee on a remodel and somebody goes, oh, no, they'd never pay that much. How could that ever happen? Oh, no, no, no. You know, it's not about the client. Right. The client's already there. The client wants to spend it. <laughs> That's fine. It's the, the designer doesn't um, believe that it's possible. And if you don't believe it's possible, you can't do it. Well, that is the key right there. It's if right you there. really don't believe it's possible, you cannot do it. I don't care what it is. And sometimes it takes knowing that someone else was able to do it. And you think, huh, okay, so it is possible to do. I didn't think I could do it. And maybe, and that's the second step of it. But it is first just getting out of, I always call it, Terry, get out from between your own ears. Because all the <laughs> you stories go. that you're telling yourself about your client, when you just said, oh, they would never spend $60,000 on the um, fee for that, that actually, unless that client looked right at you and said, hi, I just want to let you know my name's Sally and I'm not going to spend $60,000 on a client on this project. Like, on like you. you you've <laughs> yeah. just made it up. You actually, it is only in between your ears. And mm-hmm. so uh, to me... It's uh, my brain goes, maybe, you know, why don't we put this between my ears? I think Sally wants to spend a hundred K on this. Let's go there. Right? Entirely it's like, possible. Yeah. Entirely right? possible. Right. Entirely possible. But there's all those stories that we tell ourselves. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the biggies is I'm not good enough yet. Mm. And that one, you know, when I'm out, when I used to be out speaking publicly, I used to do a lot of showrooms and, and design centers and stuff. I would talk about that not good enough, and I would see these little black clouds popping up over people's heads. Mm. <laughs> Going, oh, there's a lot of that out there. Yeah. You know, and it's it's like I have to do something. Before I could have a $60,000 fee, I have to do something. I have to do more jobs. I have to be photographed. I have to be in a magazine. I have to win an award. I have what, you know, I have, uh, it, it's a whole piece that, that, that somebody puts in their own way to keep from growing. You know, it's and the it, truth it, because again, it is between your ears. So I know, you know it. And I've, I've had the same conversations. One designer could say to themselves, as you just said, oh, I could never do that. Once I'm published in the regional magazine, then I could do that. Another exactly. designer, you know, has a different thing. Oh, I could never do that. Once I finish my fourth job, then I could do Like the idea is each individual person in business makes up their story. And that's my exact argument that it's a fake story. Mm-hmm. Right? It is. Yeah. It's a fake story. Mm-hmm. It's a fake story that, that keeps us that keeps us in place that keeps us you know in the place that we're in you know and sometimes it shows up of, of being afraid to rock the boat mm. i've had i've talked to designers who are afraid to to shift into fees just because they didn't know anybody else who'd done it mm. you know like what 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 will happen what will people say sometimes it's just resistance to the new you know we've talked a lot about how things the way things worked 10 years ago are not the way that things work now at all Right. It's a totally, totally different situation. Um, and there's a lot of a lot of designers who are still trying to apply those old ways of doing it to now and then getting frustrated that it doesn't work. Right. right? And, and that's it, like it, clinging it, to not not using the Internet for research just because you didn't use that 20 years ago. You had to physically go to a showroom. Right. It's mm-hmm. it's it's just a made up thing in your mind that you did it that way. So you have to keep doing it that way. 
exactly and so we can't do anything because i can't go to the showroom mm -hmm. yeah that kind of that mm -hmm. kind of stuff where you, you set the whole thing up sometimes you get caught in in just technology tech resistance mm -hmm. oh I, i'll have to learn that i'm not going to do that i can't do that kind of thing right i mean that that's a mindset that the shift too that needs to happen because it's there you know you'll figure it out it's not it's not that hard Sometimes speak get... for yourself with that. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'll tell you, I, I run a completely internet based business for yeah. the last 10 years wow. and I am not a techie person at all. <laughs> I pay somebody to do every bit of this. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, yeah. I'm teasing because everybody knows that I hate the tech and I have to do it every darn day in 9,000 different ways. <laughs> well, yeah, you do what you have to do, but all the deep stuff that other people do, you yes. know, and it's, it's, and you, you're using, you're using the technology to, to help people. And I use the technology to help people. I mean, that's what I'm, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. I don't have to be terribly tech savvy to do it. Thank right. goodness. Right. <laughs> That's right. That's <laughs> right. Support. Yeah. So there's there, you know, and that was a resistance that I had to get over mm. that, you know, oh, I could really do this even if I'm, you know, not intuitive when I look at a computer screen. Right. For sure. Right. So, you know, it's getting over the fear, you know, that just what, you know, fear, fear keeps us locked in place. Fear is one of those things that, um, that, you know, the good definition of fear, that there's real fear about, like, you're going to fall off the edge of a building. Well, that's real, okay? Mm -hmm. But just about everything else is not. Everything else is made up in your head. Right. And so, you know, fear is about worrying about something that's going to happen that hasn't happened and probably won't happen. It's just a story, right? right? right. About this, this, this result that, that could be there, but there's like 10,000 other results. And one could think of the positive sides of where would happen instead of the negative pretty easily. Absolutely. Yeah. And it is a matter of training yourself to do that, to, to allow yourself to hear the voice in your head that has the positive outcome, as opposed to only listening to the voice in your head that is, is the fear voice and is the what if voice and the, you know, why me voice and how can I expect this, right? Because you have to tune in. I believe that the other voice is in all of us. It's just that whether it's our upbringing, it's the, you know, they say, you know, you're the, the sum of the five people that you spend the most time with, whatever the external factors are combined with your own internal factors. I think that it's a matter of consciously cultivating, hearing the voice that is your true voice that you said wants you to expand to your, to your most potential that the universe allows for, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And then many people carry this loud voice on their shoulder that says really nasty things to them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all the time. I mean, things that you would never, ever say to your children right. going on in your head all the time. Right. That's such and a great point. That's such a great point. And I have to say in mostly conversations from my personal life, less so with coaching um, and conversations with designers, but I've said that same thing. Would you say that to your child? Oh, no. Then why do you allow yourself to say it to yourself? Because that's yeah. so true. You would you would protect your child to the ends of all earth and mm -hmm. go at many, 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 you know, through anything to not have their ego, their psyche, their soul, their um, mind crushed. But yet we allow ourselves to do it to ourselves like, like you know, it's whatever. It's just, okay, let's do it again, right? Mm -hmm. It is. It yeah. is. And it's like having a bad roommate on your shoulder all the time. <laughs> you know, and you can say, you know, go to your room. Right. <laughs> Shut your mouth up. And go to your room. Right? Shut up. Shut up. Enough of that. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's, it's becoming aware of that stuff that will, that will shift you into being able to be what you want to be. Yeah. Like, frankly, that's really the, 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 the piece. You know, sometimes, sometimes it just gets caught in distraction. You know, most, designer I, this is maybe a stretch to say but uh, i have in in myself i know i have some add problems because i'm everywhere i'm interested in everything mm. many of the people i work with in my programs um have the same problems so i don't know if i say designers are kind of add but <laughs> you know we have so much eye candy coming at us all the time mm. it is so hard to stay focused on anything I mean, that's a real challenge. And, you know, and it's all beautiful. It's all wonderful. But if, if we go, oh, that's so great. And that and that. I mean, think about the first time you ever went to market. 
Right. I remember running around going, oh, look at that. Oh, look at I never, I didn't accomplish anything. I just ran around and went, ooh, mm-hmm. ah. <laughs> you know, well, and that's just... a great point because I think that that's to, if I'm, if I'm catching your drift here, it's more of a practical, pl- applying a practical mindset. So it's not so much, um, you know, stories and, and things in your head. You just moved into actually practically having some discipline that yes you know if you keep searching for the 15th different sofa you're going to find yet another one that you love whether you're doing at high point in person or you're doing it through your resources at your office but the idea is that that doesn't serve your client it doesn't serve you it doesn't serve your bottom line just and I and to me it's like great like I design window treatments right so I know that feeling but I also know when we hit it it's the right fabric it's the right style I'm done. I'm not like, oh, well, maybe if I put another 20 minutes effort into it, I could come up with something better. It's like, no, move on. (laughs) Design something else for the next one. We have to make our money here and keep rolling, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You don't phone it it in. You don't phone it in. You don't, you know, stop until you get it. But I think what you're talking about, that distraction, because there is so much opportunity for designers to really just one more click for one more beautiful website is that's a discipline that you you owe yourself as a business person to nail the design and move on, right? Yeah, and and I think it has to do with the confidence in yourself that you make good decisions. Mm, good point. That's the woo-woo mm-hmm. that connects to it, that you just say, yeah. I did it. I did a good job. I, this I is a great it. design. Yeah. yeah, I'm good at this. Mm-hmm. I'm trained in this. I make good decisions and mm-hmm. move on. Mm-hmm. It, and and it's, a, it's a self-worth and self-confidence piece quite frankly, because you can get lost in analysis paralysis and just go on and on and on and on and on. You get nowhere. Right, right. And, and you know, and, and interestingly, you know where I learned that? Taking the NCIDQ, mm. which, which doesn't, which the, the key that I got out of it was that make a decision and move, mm. make a decision and move, make a decision and move, because that was the only way to pass it. Oh, couldn't, couldn't so you couldn't sit around. there and analyze the answers uh-uh. and maybe, uh, no, it's like, do this uh-uh. and get through no. it. Right. Exactly. Right. What's right. the answer to that? Uh, that. Okay, great. Do it. 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 And okay, you can get through that two right. and a half hours. Right. So, it, you know, that it, it's, it's really, you know, I, I don't know that NCIDQ helped me ever <laughs> sell a job or anybody hired me because I did that. But on a personal level, it, it got my speed up and it got my focus in the right place. It was really, really useful. So. You know, for anybody, don't make that. I have to do. I have to do NCIDQ before I can have a good client. No. They, there's a connection there. Right, <laughs> right. That, that, there's that a connection really there, connect. but that's not the one you're making. <laughs> yeah, mine. Mine was. This is what I've chosen as my life profession. Um, this is a minimum competency test. I surely can pass this, mm-hmm. and I did. Mm-hmm. And it was more of a personal, a personal right. goal right. to do that. But, but that's in that that piece of being able to operate in this this arena in a way that's confident and clear and and feeling good about yourself. And the thing is, this all comes to us from, like I said a few moments ago, about it, from our, everything that we bring to the moment that we go to meet a client, everything in our whole childhood, everything, right? Everything. Terry? Everything. Right, mm-hmm. right, right. I mean, it's just, um, it's a crazy thing from, you know, and, and the thing is, is that you can have a background coming from wealth and you could process this a different way that gets in your way, or you can come from a, a more modest background and process it in a way that gets it in your way. It's mm-hmm. the idea is it isn't just people that come from a modest background that don't understand that there are wealthy luxury clients that will pay top dollar for these services. There's stories and there's things from our childhood and our media that and and the media that we've been exposed to that affect us from both avenues right absolutely absolutely i mean it it it, a a great deal of it comes from the way we grow up Mm. and the messages we got and and the messages we got as little kids of how to operate in the rural in the world so that that we were we were acceptable, right? And then, then would people would let us be there, right? Especially right. for girls, you know, right. for girls, it's kind of like, be quiet, look good. Don't talk too much. Don't ask for what you want. Wait for it to yeah. come to you. You know, don't, don't speak too loudly. Don't take up too much room. Now, all of those messages that, that we got um, come through in our business. 
which 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 we struggle with because we were taught that this is how you you be a good girl. It's, it's really training to be a good wife, I think. And I don't know if that's really useful or not. It wasn't really so much in my world, but <laughs> it may still be. I don't know. I don't know. But it is. It doesn't work in business. I mean, we were we were taught as women to to think of everybody else first, give ourselves away, take care of everybody, don't ask for what you want, it'll come to you, that kind of thing. Well, clients aren't family. Right. Okay. And when you and when you run your business that way, and it's from the heart. I mean, you know, and it, it breaks my heart to see it too, because it's coming from the heart. It's because you care, because you really want to do it. But if you do that, people take advantage of you, and you just get beat up, and you get resentful, and you fall down, and <laughs> that's not not good. Hmm. Not good. It so, is. It's mo- funny because you can have conflicting. You know, I've I've talked so much on the show about my mother and my aunt who have really formed a lot of my the way I think, but I can see the external forces of my childhood being a child of the 60s, by the way. Mm-hmm. So even more so than of what you said, be small, be quiet, don't be loud, don't be big, don't be this, don't do that. But, you know, she and she just put it in me opposite. But what I'm saying is, as you were describing all that, I can remember times being surprised at people's reaction to me Mm -hmm. just because I was just showing up and being capable and not being embarrassed about being capable and being there. But as a young person through my teens and twenties, I've remembered by the time I got into the mid twenties, I was like, Oh, there's places where you should not speak first, Luann. (laughs) Like, you know what I mean? Like, whereas if I was a guy that would have been like, Hey, you get brownie points for having the answer first. (laughs) Exactly. You're up there. Exactly. Exactly. Or or places where you, you didn't want to be too smart. Right. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So interesting. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But but you can't you can't bring that to business because when you come to your business and you if you are the principal of your firm, you know, 90 percent, let's just say, I don't know what the percentage, but most people aren't going to look at you as a woman. They're going to look at you as the leader in this design process and they need uh-huh. you to stand tall and be in charge. And that doesn't mean being aggressive. It doesn't mean being disrespectful. It just means have your spot and your spot is as the leader there. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 But what gets in the way are all those <laughs> all yes. those those messages when we we got when we were a kid. Uh, I, I would share a story with you about a, a coaching story about a designer I worked with, very good designer, very capable, and and our project was to move her up market. Okay. And she was she had a good practice, good solid practice, but she wanted to get into the high end stuff, the big stuff. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that's marketing. That's a little patience. That's focusing on it. But clients showed up. My client showed up in the right address. There's original art on the walls. Okay, this is the right client. Mm. The first thing this client wanted was an A. Rudin sofa. Mm. Okay, so our designer worked on it with it and got everything worked out, got the whole thing figured out. And it came to, I don't know, 14, 15,000, something like that. And what she, what she said was, you know, Kravit makes the same thing for seven. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now we know Kravit makes a great sofa. It's fine. Um, she proceeded to to convince this woman not to spend fourteen thousand dollars, but to spend seven thousand dollars for a sofa that looks just like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and we can use the same fabric. Everything's there. Um, and she pushed for that because she grew up in a family where where saving money, being able to do something on, um, let's say on the cheap, to use that phrase, but to, to slide something in that didn't cost as much, but looked really good. She got a lot of praise for that. Mm. You know, in my family, I got a lot of praise for that kind of stuff. I could right. make stuff happen for right. next to nothing. Right. So she thought, you know, here's this first big client. She's really going to do her a favor. We're going to do something really good for her. We're going to show her how I can save you $7,000. So they ordered the Kravitz sofa. And they put it in, and of course, the first thing she does is start picking on it and going, oh, you know what, this corner isn't right. So they take it back, and they rework it a little bit. And by the way, Kravit make it's a perfectly good sofa. They do a great job, right? right? We all know that, right. right? This is not about the Kravit sofa, right? okay? So it comes back, um, and then a couple of weeks later, there's another phone call. You know what, the cushions aren't right. We got to do that. So they work on that. They bring it back again. The third time she calls, she said, get this out of my house. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ah. Okay, so, you know, the solution was to get her the right sofa, and she did, but she lost the client. Right. And the thing is, yeah. to your point, it 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 could have been 
any other brand. It could have been anything. The client said, I want this product, this brand. And it wasn't exactly. your average entry brand. So if a client, a luxury client is kind of the point, it's like what I say on the show all the time, don't save my money for me. Right. And exactly. so, so in this, exactly. I'm talking about it in general, make sure you show me everything at your, that, you know, from your expertise that would be amazing for me. But when somebody comes into it and they have a particular mindset about a label or a brand, then they're telling you that's important. And all she did was fight her all the way through. I'm sure that, that yeah. the sofa from Kravit was perfect the first time, but she Beautiful. had it in her yeah. head. And what happened was she had buyer's remorse other way she wanted like exactly. like that oil painting and left it on vacation without getting it and now she's all mad that she never bought it that's basically what exactly. happened she that's wanted her happened. status yeah. thing right yeah yeah exactly. and, 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 and you have to pay attention to those her cues. Aunt had a so that's what we want yeah. right right you yeah. see and now and she's so... in a long line of people who don't have that same sofa <laughs> 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 and by the way there would be another client depending on the scenario that would be very happy to look at everybody in her family and say my Kravitz sofa looks just as good wears just as well and I saved half the money than you people did so you're all nuts so the idea is is Get out of your head. And then this this particular situation, the woman was about the status and the lineage that her whole family had it. It's not about what's in your head, right? Right. It's not about saving money. Right. 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 High end clients are not about saving money. No. No. They're Even about they having what the they want. Tight. The budget is three hundred thousand, but it's really tight. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That, but it's you know it's not actually true right exactly you know, or it's, it's true for them but for us going oh 300,000 wow that's great and they're going oh I only have 300 to spend exactly my <laughs> last house I spent 500 I'm really slumming it this time <laughs> exactly now I'll give you another story in another direction no, another way it works is that we had designer this is on the west coast going the other side of the world um young designer in a kitchen studio and she wanted to desperately to sell a pogan paw kitchen mm. now pogan paw is gorgeous it's beautiful it's really expensive and it comes from europe where they have small kitchens mm. in southern california you have very large kitchens mm. <laughs> so she was struggling with the pricing on it and every time that she would design one and then present it it would collapse because the cabinets were so expensive mm. Right. And she didn't really prep it enough to begin with about what this was going to cost. Well, finally, the client comes in. That's perfect. They live, you know, six gates back. Right. Through this, <laughs> you know, they're, they're in the right place. She drives in. She says, oh, I'm so glad I got a new car. When I drove in, the, the guy came and took my car away. <laughs> OK, <laughs> you got a good one there. <laughs> so. So these people want a Pogan Paw kitchen. And this kitchen is about, I don't know, probably 1,100 feet, something like that. Huge. Wow. It's a big, big space. Yeah, big. It's a big, it's a mansion. Right? <laughs> so she, and they want something totally special, totally amazing. So she designs this thing that's incredible. Very contemporary, very clean. I see the drawings as she's going along. They're fabulous. And then I get this phone call and says, well, she says, well, you know my kitchen? I went, yeah. She says, I can't do it. Oh, Why? She says, well, it's 256000 So what's wrong with that? You've never sold a kitchen that was under 100. What? Right. What's 256 And she said, oh, you don't understand. That's just the cabinets. I went, oh, well, what's the rest of it? Right. And she said, well, we've got about 80 in, in um, appliances and Miele stuff. And I've got these really slick countertop that's elevated and it's lit with LEDs. You know, there's another 60. And then it's all inset. So the construction's pretty expensive because it's an older house and we got to get it perfectly square because, you know, Pogapa is a Porsche. <laughs> absolutely perfect, right? So actually she was talking about 500000 Whoa. Yeah. And that was more than she paid for her house. Now, that is a, that is a money consciousness challenge, right? right? You really want to sell this job, but you really, you, you're really getting, you know, stuck in the money part, mm -hmm. you know? So... What we did, what we did was, uh, you know, realize that, you know, that's what it is. These people could afford that, right? It's not like out of line. Um, was to have her practice saying those numbers out loud until her voice and her cells stopped quaking. Right. Right? Because, because it was so contrary to anything that could be possible in her world. I mean, she had to literally um, um, say it enough times 
<laughs> you know, I have horses. In horse training, you call it sacking out. You got to do it enough times that it just isn't interesting anymore. Right. 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 And you can do that to yourself. It's like learning a tennis swing. And it's not about thinking about the number in your head because that's not physical. And then when you go to say it, you're going to bobble it. You're going to you're not going to sound confident right. and clean. So she practiced and practiced. You can practice in your car when you're driving, in the shower. You just have to keep presenting this out loud until you can say it without any quiver whatsoever. Okay? The expression we use in our coaching group is pass the salt. Hmm. $456,000 pass the salt. Right. Exactly. Yep. Just like that. No emotion, nothing. Right. Completely clean, completely flat. I do this every day. Right. This is what it costs. It's normal. It's normal. <laughs> it's normal. It's normal. Is, right? And you do want this, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so she practices and practices. They they finally come back from their trip. She gets to present it. They absolutely love the drawings. Are spectacular. They don't change anything, which is amazing, you know, because <laughs> right. somebody usually has to mess something up. They <laughs> absolutely did it exactly the way she drew it, and they did not faint when she told them what the price was. Right. Because now, she they got, live in that world. They live in that world, right. yes. Right. Actually, in the time she was designing the kitchen, they had sold their yacht and bought a new one. So, <laughs> you know, what's, what's a $500,000 kitchen? This is the thing. And yeah. it, it is just like we've been saying, get out of your own head, get out of your own reality and your, your non-reality, the non-reality in, your, in between your ears, but the reality of your own life. Because who cares? You know, what's so funny is – she had a hard time because her own whole home caught the 500 or less. But, you know, when she was selling $100,000 kitchens, there's people that their homes didn't cost 100000 I mean, that's where you have to just smack yourself and go, okay, take me out of this, right? It's yeah, about the value. Home. It's about knowing what it's worth. It's it's not only knowing what you're worth, which is what you teach everybody, and I want to get into that at what you do in your um, upcoming summit that you're doing, but yeah. it's also knowing that what you just priced and pro pro proposed is worth it. So if it's really worth it, if that if you, everything that she designed comes up to $500,000, then yeah, that's the price you say. And if somebody doesn't like it, well, what part of this do you want to take away? Exactly. You, right? Exactly. It's as simple as that. It's like going to the grocery store. Oh, here's the milk, the bread, the eggs, you know, the yogurt and, you know, the apples. Oh, it's $28. I only have 25 Well, what are you taking away? Nobody says, oh, all right, I'll give it to you for 25 You no, know, it's no, like, no. no. <laughs> no, no take no. the eggs off, sweetie. Buy them tomorrow. Go to the bank. <laughs> yeah, <back down. laughs> you know, in the end, the result of all that was that she won the ASID first in kitchens and her city, of course. Oh, I just the got goosebumps on that. <laughs> local home star printed, did, you know, did, it was published on that. Then they did a four-page spread on it in the local home and garden magazine. Oh. And then Poganpa put it in Architectural Digest with oh. her name on it. My gosh. Now, you look at that and say, what did, do that, what did that do to her career? Wow. I mean, she just took an enormous step up into what she works on now. Okay. Huge, huge step. And, you know, it's, it's, I gave her a little push, but the kudos go to her for the courage to do the work, to be able to do that, to be able to say, this is a $500,000 kitchen past the salt. Right, 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 that's right, where, right. That's where the genius is. And, you know, that genius is in everyone. That's I the mean, everyone. That is the truth, the yes. absolute truth. So, you know, when you start identifying those things that are tripping you up and have some support in stepping through it, understand how you how you get through those pieces, everything can open up. And it's astounding. It's and this astounding. is exactly what you do in your um, Interior Design Business Academy, right? This is like part of, you know, the summit that you have coming up and the, and the, the long-term coaching that you do. Tell us a little bit about all of that, how you work with designers, Terry, and how they can understand more of this for themselves. Sure, absolutely. Well, you know, the first thing we always work with is, is mindset because, mm -hmm. you know, as I said earlier, I discovered that unless you shift your mindset about what's possible and your ability to think bigger and realize that it could be, you know, that we stand in the moment of possibility every moment now 
all possibilities exist. Um, once you start stepping into that and opening that up, then the actual how to do it, the nuts and bolts, the recipe is incredibly easy, extremely easy. So, you know, one of the ways we do that, practice that is we only start with positive focus. So everything we do, like on our Q&A call, in fact, I've got one this afternoon. We do it every week. We get together on the phone for an hour and a half and we do open Q&A. Everybody has to open um, with something positive, mm. a positive focus. What happened this week? Very often, it's like I got two new clients, or I, you know, I got that sixty thousand dollar fee, or I got the, you know, you know, it's all the things going on, um, and personal stuff too, mm -hmm. you know. Um, yummy things that happen to us are are just as good, but but. Um, building that energy into that positive focus and holding it up there is is how we ki we shift mindsets. Quite frankly, um, it 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 holds everyone in that place so that everything can be possible. You know, then you know we just answer those questions. It's it's pretty easily. You know, um, beyond the Q and A calls, we um, have a lot of step by step recipes of how to do things. Okay, and those are in the modules. The modules are delivered on the computer. There's all of those things. Um, and we also teach them in workshops. We do um, five or six workshops every year that's just uh, just in, in marketing and mindset. And, uh, you know, and we call them workshops because the idea um, – I have so many people come to me and they say, well, I need a marketing plan. And they're always working on the marketing plan. And I say, you don't need a marketing plan. You need to do marketing. <laughs> let's, get out of the, let's get out of the drawings and into the <laughs> so, – so through the year, we do a series of workshops where we do the work. Okay, we do the plan. Here, mm. Here's this piece. Here's this piece. Here's this piece. So that systematically you can add these things into your practice in a way that doesn't um, take you down. You know, you can't spend all your time doing social media. I mean, and quite frankly, clients don't come from social media. I mean, it's something that needs to be there and back things up. But, but frankly, clients come from referrals, right? So, you know, th those kind of things are what we're building um, all of those times with one-on-ones, with our retreats in person, which are great. Um, we do three retreats during the year, and we have a really exciting one coming up. I'm going to tell you about in a little bit um, that we actually share with everybody. <laughs> but, but our growth program is where we begin and growth is about getting clients and making money um, and it's where designers need to start and it's not um, necessarily for beginners but can be um, you need to have a few clients going but it's also for designers who've whose businesses are on the old frame and haven't quite shifted to the new one and need to know how to get the the, the money wheel going you know mm -hmm. and the market wheel going and getting that stuff to keep going uh, structure program is the next level up, and that's about building a rock star team behind you and, uh, uh, stru and systems that streamline your business so that you can take on more jobs, bigger jobs, go after the big stuff, and still have a life. Right? And still right. have an that's the key. You know? That's the key, yeah. Um, our goal there is for you to be able to take a three-week vacation unplugged, and the money keeps flowing. Everybody's fine. Wow. So that's where we need to go. And then we have a master's level. It's for the, the very upper level people who are pushing a mill or more, um, are doing special projects. Um, you know, that's that's a different conversation entirely. Um, and so we have a group, a small group of those. And that's um, a lot of fun, too, because I spend a lot of time with them. They're a good one. Um, one of the things that that we do in our education program that's probably different than anybody else is what I call fly the plane while you build it. Hmm. Now, that's a really weird phrase. I realize that. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds weird or scary, but it's actually not. Um, you know, in some education things, they say, okay, read this, and you're supposed to know how to do it. Well, you, it, it ends up being theory and not practice. What we do is practice. So what we're working with is the jobs that you have. And when you get a new job opportunity, it's being able to have the support to apply these new ways of pricing and structuring it so that it, you come out with, with a good amount of time and profit on the other side. And so by using what you're working on to learn how to do it, you learn really fast. And quite frankly, after we've helped you stack up a job and, and figure out where the profit is and how to present it, and, you know, I literally got my hand on your back. They go present this. Mm. <laughs> you, know, you can see some of the testimonials on the website. So I, I didn't want to do it. She made me kind of think. <laughs> 
and, and that's, gave me a look up, but he did. it worked. It worked. Yes, that's what we yeah. talk about. You know, borrowing some confidence from someone else. I say that all the time. If you're not quite sure, you're not quite confident yourself. Borrow it from me or from somebody that you listen to on the show, and go do it. Right? Because once you do it, then you go, oh, I could do that. I got it. I got it. Yeah. Yes. And then you can go to the next level and the next level. So, you know, it's kind of a real world, real world approach to to learning the business. Um, and there's a nuts and bolts piece that's, you know, the education pieces that you can read and learn and that sort of thing. But, you know, the real amazing things comes out of the retreats. Those are just really, really fun. You know, those are two days and three days where we get together um, and in and in a very close way and connect and and work through some of these issues and share and and um, it's really remarkable. And and anybody who's been in our program will tell you the retreats are where the big ahas, where the oh, big yeah. shifts come. Yeah, it's like oh my gosh, it's amazing, it's amazing. And we've done um, our retreats on on video on Zoom recently, and they're fabulous. I was really worried about it, you know, we're at that period of time where we can't get together in person and had to do it in video. And you know what? It was fabulous. The the feedback, I mean, one of the things I ask at the end is, well, how does this stack up against being in person? Because mm. a lot of these pers- people had, you know, been in person before and said, you know what? I think it's better. I think it's better. Wow. You know, because you're, you're, you're right here. You're really, you know, you're really connected to everyone. So that's, that's really cool. That's yes. really cool. Yeah, I, so, we've taken a few of our things from real life to virtual. We took our Power Talk Friday from real life to virtual, and that's a one-day coaching event and a very small group, um, six, eight, ten designers usually. And I have to say, uh, just like you said, it was like, huh, not really thrilled about doing this, but kind of have no choice. And it was outstanding. It really was. And so it really can be um, very meaningful, even if what I found was – obviously going from real life to virtual, some things were different and were missing, but then other things were there that weren't possible with the real life meeting. And so it ended up being really terrific anyway, right? And you found the same thing. Almost richer. Almost, yes. in some ways, almost richer, you know, and more connected. It was mm-hmm. really, it was really interesting how, you know, and, and certainly for you and I, it's interesting being on the other side going, well, is this going to work or not? Right. And then have it work really well. It's like, whoa, that's, that's, this is cool. <laughs> yes. It's really great. Yeah. One this of the really things great. that I noticed was, is just a tiny observation was when you're real life with somebody, even if there is only eight or 10 of you in a room, I could be really engrossed in a conversation with you. Maybe I'm helping you or you're helping me, but somebody can interrupt us. Somebody can walk up and say, hey, here's your glass of wine, or hey, did you want to go get food, or hey, where are you sitting? And boom, it's done. But when you do the events like this, it's like if we're having a moment and we're talking or teaching or you're teaching me or I'm teaching you, nobody's going to go like, hey, I just wanted to ask this. <laughs> like, yeah. right? That's true. It's <laughs> a control issue. <laughs> so you could just yeah. get, I found that you could get deeper. Like we got deeper yeah. into the topics that the designers came you know, with wanting to get, yes, yes. Interesting. So, and so tell us about this retreat that you have coming up. I'm excited about it. Very excited. It's the 2020 summit and it's called mastering design fees and pricing. Um, not surprising <laughs> because that's what we all need to work about so much. And this retreat is mandatory for our growth and structure and master's students they're always part of it but this is the one i open up to to the public to to other designers and design professionals creatives and that sort of thing it it's really um a remarkable piece it's three days it is three whole days um and it takes that long because we're after transformation we're Mm. after shifting your shifting your mindset we're after getting getting into those things that have been tripping you up and getting in your way and keeping you from being able to present things that are bigger um, and really connect with the kind of client you want. This is the, the underside of it. We'll spend a couple of days there in the underside and then get into how, how that works with how you actually do it in the actionable items. Mm. So it's, it's three days of those kind of pieces. It's really, really amazing. Um, you know, and the, the, the cool thing is, is that, that all of you, all of you have what it takes to be a confident designer. Absolutely. And, and you, you know how to design, you have beautiful gifts to add to the world and, and attract clients and, and, and be paid well, you know, you, you have that ability. You just need the strategies, the how to, to make it happen. 
So in the 2020 summit, Mastering Design Fees and Pricing, it's real, really where your passion for design combines with the ability to earn what you're worth, to get paid what you're worth. Okay? I love it. And, and, yeah, well, I noticed good. one of the things that we talked about that you said that you really do focus on in this summit as well is there's a lot of designers that work on a lot of little projects and together they create a certain amount of gross revenue. But we all know that that's more difficult in the day to day. Like you said, it more often will result in sitting at your desk at nine, 10 o'clock at night. And one of the things that your one of your superpowers is helping designers really lean into and attract more of those six figure design jobs. So maybe instead of doing 20 jobs in 2021, you'll do seven or eight or 10, but the gross revenue is the same or higher and the workflow is smoother and more systemized and more profitable. Right, Terry? Isn't that one of the the keys that you really get into? Very well. (laughs) (laughs) You said that very, very well. That is exactly it. That is exactly it. You know, the the little stuff just kills you, Mm -hmm. absolutely kills your time. Mm -hmm. And you can can get so much more done on a big job and be so much more profitable and so much more connected to the client. So much more, you you know, part of design is really is, is, is making a difference in somebody's life. Okay, and big jobs make a difference in somebody's <laughs> life. You, know, you change the way they live, yeah, right. and, and and for the better. And it's it's really a, a marvelous thing. The Absolutely other thing that marvelous. I noticed that when I was reading about it is, and I feel like this is another really great point to um, that's so needed is teaching how to have the conversations that a avoid the type of client that is an internet shopper or b within the project and setting up the project and setting up the proposal and really laying the groundwork of this is how this is going to go and part of it is not going to be include with you going out on the internet and reselecting everything i've sent i've uh, per, per, you know uh, designed for you right precisely yeah. precisely cuz that's that a big pain do- point it is a big pain point. And you know where that's from? It's from not spending enough time in the setup. Mm-hmm. It, it's, it's designers have so much heart and so much desire to design that, you know, actually they'd go do it for free, but we don't, don't tell anybody that, please. <laughs> well, I, know, for me. I know you would. <laughs> so no, don't, don't say it. Don't go there. <laughs> but, but, but what happens is they're so anxious to jump in and design and make something beautiful. Ooh, I want to get into this, that we don't take the time to do the setup properly. We don't, you know, the, 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 the contract and the way you set up the job and the way you have those conversations about, about internet shopping and that sort right. of thing. And when, you know, that needs to happen in the very beginning. Right. I mean, that's just one question. Do you, do you like to shop on the internet? And, you know, quite frankly, somebody who likes to do that will tell you. I mean, they'll go on on a story that's 10 minutes long about how they went through <laughs> whatever they went through, and then they saved $60. Woo! You know, okay, so I think you know. <laughs> right. I'm booked this century. Thank you for inquiring. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Or you could just design it and let her buy it. Right. Because right. there's a big line between designing and purchasing. Right. 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 And for the amount of work you're doing for that purchasing and the little bit that you're making on it, and I'm going to fix that part too, you're not charging enough on the product. Right. And part of it is, and that's the way you're presenting it, it causes all that pushback. It's not that 25% or 35% or 45% is too much. It's not at all. It's the way you present it that has that problem. And that is that that is huge, 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 huge. In the masterminds that we uh, are running with my cousin Eileen, we, you know, this is one of the things that we hear over and over again. How you know we're always talking about, and the and the different designers are always sharing the different ways that they set that conversation up to avoid that. Because once you understand how to do that, it's done. You don't have that conversation job after job after job. Yeah, no. or or design the whole thing and then have that conversation. Right, right. You know, right, and right. find out that you're you're not going to get what you thought you were going to get. You know, and and you priced your design fee too low because you thought you were going to sell product. Right. That's a that's a trip over all the time. If you see it as two separate things, and I'm going to be profitable whether I order anything or not. It changes the way you you put out your your fees. That's so key. That is so key right there. You have to make money at every phase, regardless if the next phase is coming or not. This phase has a value and charge for that value. Mm -hmm. Right. And and I hope 
is not a business plan. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm going to do less on the design V because I hope they will do all the furniture products for, you know, purchases. Yes, and I'll make me. enough there. Right. Yeah. That, no, that, it's not. Yeah. That will, that will take you to starvation and resentment. Right. And that, <laughs> and that, that falls under my know what you will do and what you will not do. If yeah. you will yeah. design for this amount, then design for that amount. But if it's not really the amount that you want to design for, then don't plan on getting it somewhere else. Like this yeah. is the fee, right? Yeah, hundred percent. Exactly. And if people aren't willing to pay your fee to do it there, it's not going to happen later. It's right. not going to get better. It's right. going to get worse. Right. Right. I mean, right. I mean, they're just telling you this is the kind of client I am. You know, it, you won't you won't nice them into something else. You're just going to get beat up. Exactly. So, so learning to stand your ground, learning to stand in your own power, in your own grace, um, and and say this is what I do and this is what the value is, um, it is huge. It's huge. It's really, really remarkable. Well, and the thing is what I love about your program, especially this one that you open up to everybody, is this is for any designer at any phase of their business. We probably each one of us has some layer or some facet that we keep running up against that, like I said, is between our ears and we need it mm -hmm. unlocked. And so whether a designer is you know, a pro, if they are a seasoned designer, a, a big rising designer, a beginning designer, whatever it is, uh, there is something within this three days. Is that, would you agree with that? Or am I oh, off on that? Is it really no. geared towards one level or another? No, it's, it's an absolute spread because it affects everybody all the way through. Right. And, and this is also, th also for all my um, Interior Design Business Academy members. So they're there as well from the people in growth who are just learning what we're doing to the people in masters who are really up there kicking butt. They're all in the same group and they're all sharing. Oh, so One that's powerful too, to have yeah. access to your peers that way. Well, it is. It is. And, and you know, you look at like through what, what what's three days online do. Well, it's not just me as a talking head. It's not a whole bunch of people who who you don't even want to listen to lined up for three days. <laughs> Those things make me crazy. It's it's uh, um, very, very focused. So there's a lot of of um, breakout rooms where we're going to be sharing. There's a lot of worksheets to work through to think about things and then share and then come back and bring it back to the group. There's a whole lot of connection. And, you know, those connections and being in a group of people that are in front of you is astounding. Mm. It's a really astounding way to move up in the business because you can start, you can start to see the path. You know, one of the problems that we have is that we're all solopreneurs. You know, you got no support, no connection. There's no path to success. Nobody ever works for somebody who ever teaches them anything. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it's like you're, you're, you're out there on your own. We call it a, a solopreneur without a GPS, <laughs> you know, flopping around. In this kind of situation, you can see people ahead of you that you really, you know, I think of it like standing on their shoulders right. going, oh, that's how it works. That's what's you next. Know, Yes. Yeah, that's what next. And you can ask them, how'd you do that? And they'll tell you. Right, right. You know, and in our business, that's remarkable because, mm. you know, I, I grew up in this, you know, I did 30 years of this stuff. And when I started, you didn't ask a question or you were, you know, a stupid girl and, you know, how dare you kind of thing. Right. It was really, really Much nasty. more close to the vest. And why, how dare oh. you ask me? I had to learn this the hard way, right? Like, yeah. Why would yeah, I just you... turn around and give it to you? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that was the, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, oh, this is weird. This group of people, I mean, what I, part of what I kind of handpick everybody that, that ends up in my group is are, are open and sharing and mm. want everybody to succeed and are happy to tell you how they did it. Love it. I love it. And and it's so reasonable. You it's uh you well right now, if you're listening to this the day this show is live, right now today, you have a couple of days where we have early bird um registration still going on, right? We do. Yes. You, do. you could get into this three day event for three hundred and forty seven dollars. Insanity. Okay. And that is a yeah <laughs> that's that is a nothing. Now I'm really excited about doing this. I priced this this way because this is the first time um we've done it video instead of in a very, very exclusive hotel in Scottsdale. Mm. Okay. Which is expensive to come to. Um, you know, and 
what I want here is to open this up to more people, to more designers. So, you know, at 347, there's no reason why anybody can't get in it because it's, you know, the the value is incredible. You'll get all of the worksheets. You'll get the 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 box of goodies ahead of time. You'll get you'll get all of the the connection. Um, we also dance, by the way. We do a lot of movement. Oh, um, I love that. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> Me too. Me too. Uh, it's part of my life, this movement practice. What I know is, and we, we our teacher is actually a, a psychologist and movement practitioner um, who teaches these pieces. Um, actually, when you move your body in different ways and loosen things up, it allows your mind to do the same thing mm. and it lets all this new stuff in. And so the, the learning curve gets stronger because we're moving with it and, you know, moving to it. So um, it also is really good because a whole day of Zoom needs to have some other stuff in it. Right, right. right. So we, need, we need to break it up. So it, it, it is quite broken up. Um, and you get a chance to have lunch with your friends. Um, I mean, you can go have lunch with your family, too. But it's kind of fun. One of my favorite things about doing this is having lunch with everybody and just chatting. We'll just set up tables of eight or ten and just like we would live and you know, you've got the chance to just talk about things. There's a lot of friendships that come out of this. There's a whole a whole lot of transformation in the end. It's just really remarkable. So, you know, it's 347 for a ticket. It is October um, until October 20th. That is the end of the early bird pricing, and then it will go up from there. The other piece that if you get an early bird ticket, we're going to do a pre-event piece so you can get started on your mindset right away. Mm. And this will be a well webinar piece um, that will be ahead of time. And um, all the IDBA designers will be there as well. And we're going to be working through some, some things that we can do to get our mindset started um, immediately. And um, so that we're like ahead of the game when we mm. start on summit. That's okay. nice. So that's just for the people who sign up for Early Bird. They get the invitation to the, do the pre-event webinar with you and your other Interior Design Business Academy members. Yes. Love yes. it. So that's, that's, a, that's a, a special, special piece. So that's going to be that's going to be really cool. Now, as part of the program, there's a pre-event um, little mix and mingle the night before, which would be Wednesday night. Let's see the dates on this are November five, six, seven. It's a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, so the previous night we'll have a little mix and mingle where you can meet everybody, perhaps bring a glass of wine. We'll dance a little bit, connect that way. Um, I will do open Q and a during this. So there'll be plenty of time to ask your own personal questions. Okay. Get a little spot coaching, that sort of thing. There'll be plenty of time for that. Lots of, lots of, um, connections in that way. So there, I'm, I'm really excited about it. Oh, it, sounds, <laughs> it sounds amazing, Terry. It absolutely sounds amazing. In all, you know, there's, there's two things. After, you know, 10 years of working on this, of teaching and tidying and guiding design professionals, I, I am even more certain that your results and your success as an interior designer are a direct and irrefutable reflection of your inner beliefs. Okay? And your results and your success and your income and the level of client and design jobs you attract are a direct reflection of what you believe and expect to happen. And and I'm not kidding about this. This is really this is truth. This is absolute truth. I you know, I'd lay down my reputation on it. I mean, I'm that that solid with it. But what you need to know is that your ego gets in the way. Hmm. All right? Your ego creates the pushback. It wants to keep you safe by making sure that you don't ever change anything. Hmm. Okay? and keep you just where you are to maintain the status quo, miserable or not, okay? So what you need to know is the only way you do this is to make a commitment. The commitment always comes first in this kind of work. You make the commitment to do it, you block the time, you get the ticket, and you show up totally during that time, completely and totally um, fully engaged with everyone so that you can have this transformation. And I'd you know, love to have you there, love to have you be part of it. Amazing. Nice. Amazing. You're so, you are, you are, you are a powerhouse. I mean, really, oh, thank you. <laughs> I love it. I love your message. I love your mindset. I love your passion and your commitment to help interior designers, you know, make their businesses better. And I love that you're exactly right. Whether you are new in business or many, many years in business that you can benefit from. We, I know any conversation that surrounds these sorts of principles and ideas are, is we always can have that aha moment that unclick something. And who knows that next job, you just say the right thing, the right way, pass the song 
salt and boom, there you go, project. There it is. Yes. There it is. Yeah. Awesome, yeah. Terry. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for coming today and telling us about it. And, you know, I hope that uh, you guys have an awesome event, but I'm not at all unsure of that. <laughs> it will be fabulous. It will be fabulous. <laughs> and thank you so much for inviting us. It's lovely to have your group in included with ours. We appreciate it. So much great information. Am I right? <laughs> I have to say, Terry and I only crossed paths in the last six or seven months. And I have, I mean, honestly, each time she impresses me. And this summit that she's got coming up, yes. Imagine spending two and a half days with Terry and her team, learning, growing, creating change in your business. For information, go to Interior Design Business Academy dot com forward slash summit dash 2020 slash okay so interior design business academy dot com forward slash summit dash 2020 forward slash of course this will be in the show notes for the episode, okay? But this signature training of the Interior Design Business Academy is going to cover how to properly calculate a huge design fee for a big new build or remodel, how to figure out a design fee for a smaller project that makes sure that the profit is built in, how to price product profitably with no client pushback, how to know your, what your profit margins should really be, how to confidently present a huge price tag on product, and how to confidently present and win a huge design fee for yourself. All right. Terry says, you can expect that the way you come in on Wednesday is not the way you will be when you leave on Friday. And I think we can take her at her, at her word. Keep in mind that the early bird price for the 2020 summit is only $347, but you have to act now because if you're listening to this in real time on October 16th, 2020, the early bird ends on October 20th, 2020. Okay. And if you do sign up with an early in the early bird phase, there is a pre event wealth consciousness workshop with Terry so that you can get a head start into shifting your mindset and getting paid what you are really worth. Go to interior design business academy.com forward slash summit dash 2020 forward slash. All righty. My great thanks to Terry Taylor for sponsoring this episode and for providing this information, all of the tips and knowledge that she shared along with the episode, in addition to putting this summit together for all of us in the industry. I hope that you will decide to be excellent. Thank you so much for joining me again today. This podcast is a production of Window Works, your resource for custom window treatments and awnings. To learn how we can help you on your next interior design project, go to www.windowworks-nj.com. And if you're interested in working with me on your business, either through masterminds or one-on-one -on -one coaching, or you want to know how to get my book, The Making of a Well-Designed Business, or you just want to know what's going on in the podcast land, and where I'm going to be. All of that is found at luannnigara.com. Thank you so much. Have an excellent day.